Disney Nature's Penguins is about this awesome little penguin named Steve. Hey. <laughs> the great thing about being the narrator is I get to kind of voice Steve's inner monologue. Finally, some peace and whoa! Steve just has such this incredible spirit, but he never gives up. We meet his mate, Adeline, and we see how they raise chicks together. I'm a new dad, and it really gave me some insight into Steve's trial and error parenting. <laughs> I think people are really going to just love this movie. And the great thing is, by seeing the film opening week, ticket sales contribute to real conservation efforts. It's more than just storytelling. We need to have nature's back sometimes. So I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. Rated G. These guys spent two years in Antarctica, and I spent about eight hours in a voiceover booth. But I think our contributions are, are equal, right, to the final product. Um, I mean, we both put a lot of work into it, so. They were in Antarctica, and the vo and the voiceover booth I was in was very air conditioned, like maybe even overly air conditioned. So I get it. That's what I'm trying to say, yeah. Well, penguins are so incredible. They're such expressive little creatures, and uh, and they have such an incredible physicality. It, it, after watching them for a while, you just, as an actor, you want to get in their heads and you want to kind of understand how they think. And it just was so, it was so fun to to spend all this time, kind of watching and learning about the penguins, and then kind of bringing Steve, the main penguin, to life. So yeah, yeah, it's really a mixture of uh, you know scripted formal narration, and then there are parts where. Uh, where I slip into kind of Steve's inner monologue. And that was, some of that was scripted, some of that we, we played around with all of it, right? We, we tried to find the right, the best energy, the best line. We tried lots of different versions of things. And then I think in the final edit, they just built, built with what they had. I think people are going to feel a lot of awe about the just tenacity and scrappiness of these little penguins that seem so adorable and cute, but they are tough. And also a lot of, uh, I hope, a lot of awe and inspiration about the, the beauty and uh, fragility of our planet and, uh, and the incredible wildlife and how interconnected everything is. I think it's just an amazing opportunity to put this really beautiful animal at the forefront of people's attention in, in a place like Antarctica, you know, such an extraordinary place to image. We're just very, very happy to give, be given the opportunity to kind of tell the story behind the, the, the Adelia penguins in Antarctica. Very few people get the chance to go to Antarctica, you know, and it's sort of an extraordinarily wonderful place. We want to take people there and we want to introduce them to the most characterful animal on the planet, the Adelie penguin. He's just such a characterful guy and it's a really fun movie. I think people will connect with that. You know, Steve we, uh, Steve is a character who has a lot of flaws, but and, but also he's incredibly adorable. And I think that means that he can have a connection with a lot of people out there. And I think, you know, his humor and his, you know, the fact he's just a, such a doofus as well. I mean, I think we can all connect with that. And also many of our Disney nature movies in the past have featured mums. And so it's great to give the dads a chance. You know, it's the first movie that's really featured a dad. And as Jeff says, he, he's pretty inexperienced. He makes lots of mistakes along the way. Um, but it's a Disney film, so it, it, it all ends up happily in the end. I think Antarctica is a landscape that really suits IMAX. You know, it's absolutely vast. The images, the scale is absolutely vast. And also, it's just really rare to be able to put a, a, an animal like a penguin, you know, at that, you know, at 100 foot. It's going to be an extraordinary thing to see, you know. I think that's going to be just a, a great thing for the audience. Yeah, we've, as always with the Disney Nature movies, there is a good conservation message in the film, but also Disney Nature gives back. And in this case, through the Wildlife Conservation Network and the Global Peng Penguin Society, we're really investing in penguin conservation all around the Southern Ocean. It's a great project, really worth supporting. 
I mean, we, we're fortunate to work with some of the best camera people in the world, you know, extremely dedicated, extremely tough people. Um, they endured enormous amounts of time in the field, you know, both underwater and, and, and on top side. And, you know, we're just so lucky that we've got that talent at our fingertips, you know, to kind of be able to bring to a, a film like this. It's a very, very tough place to work, Antarctica. You know, temperature down to minus 70 Fahrenheit in the wind. You spend days in your tents waiting for the moments. And yeah, the making of bits at the end are great fun. It keeps people in their seats as the credits roll. Well, first of all, I think that the, the penguins, I mean, it's not funny really, but you can't help smiling with that waddling walk, you know? And uh, it's the only way they can get around, but they, they just look comic. And I think children will absolutely love this movie. And the photography is out of this world, absolutely stunning. It took four years and several teams of hard work, cold, so cold. Well, Conservation Wet Network, Charlie Knowles, I've, I've known them right since the beginning. And they're a wonderful organization. They, they support people who are out in the field studying animals that, you know, on, he starts them off, he helps them get going and provides money. So his idea was from the beginning to bring wealthy people to meet these uh, usually rather young people out in the field. And so uh, through the Wildlife Conservation Network, the penguin research will be supported. I mean, they're just so endearing. They're waddling along and then they come to a nice smooth bit. So they go sliding along on their tummies. <laughs> and, you know, people who don't know will be amazed that they go off for such long journeys to look for food. And they'll be amazed to see the little downy chicks. They're just terrific. Well, you know, first of all, Steve is the every penguin, right? I mean, he is, he is the quintessential guy who's just becoming a dad for the first time and trying to figure it out. And uh, what's great is one of our directors, Jeff Wilson, is a young father as well. And he pulled a lot of his experience into this. And then we ended up using Ed Helms as our narrator. Ed has a young child as well. So a lot of millennial dads involved in this thing. You know, it's, it's, it's always interesting with uh, these true life adventures because it's all about the story. I hope they fall in love with the character because, you know, it's, it's funny, I work in animation as well as this. And, you know, in animation we always talk about we create a world, we create a character, and then we tell a story. And, you know, the world is so phenomenal. I mean, when you see Antarctica and you see how beautiful Antarctica is, it just, it's stunning. And then we have this amazing character, Steve, who you fall in love with, who is, you know, who you can see is trying his best. And then out of that, the story kind of evolves. And as, as we're filming, our cinematographers are jotting down what they're seeing, the behaviors, and that helps us all put together a story that is true to life. Well, you know, let's face it, IMAX is just a spectacular format, you know. And when you see a penguin the size of a house, it blows you away. It absolutely blows you away. And truly, IMAX, they're so careful about the picture. They're so careful about the sound. I mean, you know you're walking into like the premium experience when you do that. The weather in Antarctica is not always the kindest to you. I think the biggest, the biggest thing are the catabatic winds that come in as spring is turning in the summer and you're getting 150 mile an hour winds. Uh, we had a team at Cape Crozier who essentially had a storage container and tents. And the storage container was for the equipment and the tents were for the filmmakers. And so, I mean, it's, it, to me, these guys out in the field are heroes. They are just amazing. And I'm, I'm, I am honored to be helping get this on screen.